Um, I got pregnant when I was 18 um, and was stigmatised lots. I um, had a really good midwife, um, Sue Roberts, um, still in midwifery now, but she run a, a teenage mums group. Um, so we had met, met her in pregnancy and she must have realised I was gobby and quite confident. So she tried to harness that um, and got us in a, running a, a little mums group. And at first we were just attending it. And then again, funding and capacity for Sue. She said, I'm going to have to stop it because, you know, I can't, I haven't got the capacity to run this anymore. And I said, well, I'll run it. Um, so I think I was about 19. Then our jack had arrived, me first. Um, and then we started to run the group and we supported other teenage mums. Um, we did some education bits. Um, you know, we had a nice little peer support network. And then Sue got some funding from the breastfeeding network for us to be trained as breastfeeding peer supporters. It's quite a few of us had breastfed, um, which was a rarity where we lived for teenagers. And then we started running our own breastfeeding group. And then in 2009, um, Health and Wellbeing Fund uh, gave what was is now Koala, was formerly Homestart, a pot of money to run a, a systematic peer support project um, and it needed a coordinator. So everybody that I was working with within NHS was like, get that application done, get it done now. Um, but just a mum, just been a volunteer, just got GCSEs, no qualifications really to speak of, um, but got the job and absolutely have loved every minute of it. I, even though I've been doing this for so long, I still have people say, I don't know about you. And that for me is not good. You know, and, and I don't think that Koala Northwest can meet everybody's needs, but we know other people who could. And if, if you're not isolated, if you're connected, if you are embedded in that system, if there's a full, you know, um, info share policy where everybody is offered the same thing it's not a roll of a dice where you know oh, we haven't got volunteers this week or you know we're, we're short staffed on the midwifery ward this today so you didn't get any support it should be everybody gets the same universal offer and they pick and choose what works for them Yeah, so we're funded for our postnatal service for breastfeed and support by 0 to 19 to the health visiting service, so our, our health visiting trust. Um, but we're not funded to do anything antenatally. Um, so the 1001 Days programme pots enables us to have more contact with pregnant women to give those key messages around infant feeding, but also more than that. Um, you know, talks about perinatal mental health, talks about parent infant relationships, um, talks about the benefits of oxytocin on the developing baby in utero, um, but also stops families having to seek out all these different services. It's just one registration form at the point of pregnancy, and then they can access whatever they want on Wirral, um, rather than have to revisit their story each time. Through the years, we've Trained 10, 20 volunteers every single year since 2009. Supported over a thousand women every single year. Um, so, you know, coming on for a fair whack of women since we've started. Um, but been able to sort of diversify and um, bring in antenatal support again. You know, move to a virtual model when COVID hit. Um, and really sort of build that, that breastfeeding community within the Wirral. If you're looking at, um, you know, IQ levels, if you're looking at health, if you're looking at resilience and your ability to be social, all these things create poverty in a person's life. But breastfeeding can address most of them, all of them, um, you know, as well as supporting the parents. So I think, you know, it ticks all boxes and it's free. But like you said, it, it, it doesn't benefit government in, in, in a monetary value. And, and I think also I've seen... I've seen people who live in really, really deprived areas change their behaviour through breastfeeding. You know, that ability to be responsive and understand and invest in another little entity. <laughs> so I think, you know, we've got to acknowledge that and, and it's not one size fits all. Um, and it doesn't matter where your postcode is either. Um, you know, I, I remember going to a mum in, you know, one of the really affluent areas of Wirral years ago, five, six years ago, um, big gated property. Um, but but dad worked away. She couldn't get to her neighbour. She'd had a C-section. Her mobility was an issue. She was literally trapped in her own home and couldn't shout. You know, whereas you go to 
Birkenhead North, where, you know, your life expectancy is probably about 18 years less from an eight mile square radius. Um, and you can knock on the wall and someone will come and help you <laughs> um, because that's the community feel within those areas. So I think even some of, uh, of the places that our women live and the communities that they're in are very, very different on the Wirral. Um, you know, I remember supporting a mum for over 12 months um, in Rock Ferry, where, you know, only 15% of our women even start breastfeeding. And she had said to me, don't ever wear your badge coming to the door and don't ever have that, that, that bag that says who you are. I don't want anyone in this road to know I'm breastfeeding. And I just thought, oh, you know, emotionally, she can't even celebrate her success. With peer support uh, and the volunteer model, we totally embed that, you know, acknowledge where you came from, acknowledge your journey, debrief it, let's celebrate it, let's cry about it, let's hug about it, um, and then let's move on to support women with what works for them and what the good outcomes are for their children. You know, as women, <clears throat> you look at studies about oxytocin levels, you know, we are social beings. We need to be with other women who are doing similar things. So I think, you know, you, you see it, we see it in the breastfeeding group, run breastfeeding groups for years, you know, even before I had this job. And, you know, you just watch a, a mum blossom into her own parenting or her own, you know, with, with support and, 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 and a sounding board and, and, and an opportunity to get it wrong. You know, oh, it sounds like that was quite difficult. Well, no, actually, it was, it was you know, and, and just using that reflective counselling approach with them and then watching them just think, yeah. And then and then stepping back when they, they support the new little mum that comes into that group who's all frightened, like, you know, a little deer in the headlights. But actually that, that mum's been coming for six months and she recognises herself in that new mum. And then these mums go on to volunteer and, and the cycle continues. And, and I think, you know, for me, the passion around peer support is that community asset. It's that these are women, these are all women, these are local women, they're not you know, professionals, then, I mean, some of them are professionals, but not with that hat on. Peer support doesn't ignite a flame to breastfeed. It stokes one that's already there. And I thought that's what we're doing. We're finding that fire in the women of what they want, you know, and it's not about doing to them. It's about asking them <laughs> and also enthusing them. You know, even, even relation to vaccinations in pregnancy, you have women, oh, do I, don't I, you know, going through this, this turmoil within themselves about how to keep their baby protected. Um, you know, it's it's so hard. And I think we're still seeing gaps in services, you know, especially our statutory and our health services. There's still gaps. You know, we still haven't got full capacity clinics running again. Um, we still got reduced contacts in, in, in some of our, our NHS appointments. So, you know, those meaningful conversations, you know, and we've also still got very stressed staff. You know, we've we've been understaffed as, as a whole population. Um, so those people who have been able to come to work are shattered, um, you know, and, and not less effective, but their cups are full themselves, you know. So I think it's even more important for us to look after each other as well as the families. We've had article, we've had an article put in the local paper before. Um about uh, a disgusting mum on the bus breastfeeding her child. Um, so what we did was we contacted Stagecoach. Um, we wrote a policy. I trained all the staff. Um, we got every single Stagecoach bus to have a breastfeeding friendly sticker on it. So really it's about actually that's an isolated idiot. Um, and this is about actually getting, a, a, you know, talking with your feet and getting a huge support network around to say, no, you, you know, you can feed on buses and, as a community, we support that. But I think there is sometimes idiots. Um, and over my you know years of supporting families, I have, I remember a mum I was supporting with additional needs. First time she'd ever, ever, ever gone out breastfeeding and the bus driver wouldn't let her on the bus because she was feeding. So it can happen. But again, lack of education. And, and the bus driver was worried about other people. So, you know, often it's about who, whose rights are we looking after here? 